I am Primal Piggy. Thank you for joining me for another BDSM United podcast. Today's episode is the healing benefits of BDSM. It comes from a site called refinery29.com. The world of BDSM is broad and incredibly diverse, encompassing everything from the use of a blindfold during sex to forms of consensual torture. Sounds like a lot of fun, huh? It's difficult to define, and the concept is marred by misinformation, perpetuated by pornography and the mass media, and things like Fifty Shades of Grey, unfortunately. People with an interest in BDSM used to be considered dangerous. The father of psychoanalysis, Sigmund Freud, described sadomasochism as the most significant of all perversions. And William Steckel, one of Freud's earliest followers, went even further. He linked it to cannibalism, criminality, vampirism, and mass murder. Until the 2013 version of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, often referred to as DSM-5, a definitive text on mental illnesses and their treatment. Anyone who experienced arousal by atypical stimuli, such as feet or cross-dressing, was classified as clinically disordered, even if the fetish caused no distress or harm. Despite this, recent research suggests that BDSM does not indicate a disordered mind and that its practitioners have relatively good mental health. Often they're less neurotic, they're more conscientious, they're less sensitive to rejection, and they're more open-minded. In 2013, a study also found that they report being generally happier than the general population. So, does BDSM attract people who are naturally well, uh, more well-adjusted, or does BDSM improve the lives of those who practice it? Does it have the potential to heal those of us who are suffering because of our mental health? In 2008, a paper was published which said that for most people, practicing BDSM could accurately be thought of as a hobby, making it sound as wholesome as knitting or Zumba, just an innocent way to pass the time. However, if you ask around and speak to men and women on the kink scene, you'll find that they consider it to be far more fundamental component of both their identity and their well-being. Dr. Gloria Brame is a clinical psychologist, a sex therapist, and author. She says, for some people, BDSM is a hobby. Uh, she thinks it's a weird hobby, but okay. Um, she says, for me, BDSM is a legitimate sexual identity, similar to being gay. It isn't about the spanking and the whipping and the chains. She says, I would be a kinky person without any of that. I'd still want to be in charge. It's who I am. BDSM often forces us to question um, our roles if we're a disabled person, to question the expectations that we have for ourselves and the expectations that society has for us. Vulnerability, it's not a weakness. We're, we feel empowered through vulnerability. Of course, BDSM is just one of the ways many of us look after our mental health. We don't think that it should be the only form of self-care or considered a replacement to therapy, but it definitely offers a lot of potential to process issues in a constructive way. Um, BDSM has always been something that a lot of people have wanted to explore. Uh, 
when they try it, often they realize that there's a cathartic element to it. If you're taking beatings, for instance, you're taking lots of pain, and that can be empowering. Afterwards, you feel like you're really strong. It's like you get your demons beat out of you. And some people say it's kind of strange. It's like they need it. Um, conducting interviews with women and men in BDSM, researchers are often struck by how much um, eye contact they make um, while they're talking about the most intimate aspects of their lives. Um, oftentimes, researchers and, and, and psychologists expect discomfort, maybe even embarrassment. But um, men and women will often look you dead in the eye, unflinching, strong, and unashamed. And really, we as a community are oftentimes nothing short of inspiring. For those participating in BDSM, the pain shrinks the world to the immediate present. Anything beyond the here and now often feels irrelevant and ceases to exist. The stresses of everyday life melt away. And that, for anyone with mental health struggles, is where the relief comes. BDSM forces you to stay in the present. That in itself, even if just for a few hours, is m amazingly rehabilitative. Sex therapist Candice von Bierschotten explains further, there's good pain and bad pain. Within any sadomasochistic relationship, the masochist has a say in what's being done to them. It's going to be controlled, and oftentimes they'll have a safe word that they can use if they're no longer enjoying the experience. Uh, Zaina Ratty, a, a hypno-psychotherapist, an activist, and podcaster, or, sorry, uh, whose experiences also support the idea that BDSM uh, can be healing, said this. BDSM can be used to recover from trauma. Lots of people think you're reenacting the trauma when, in fact, you're re-scripting it. The survivor has the power in that negotiation and it's a powerful tool. Now, all this sounds great, but we like to present people that they should be risk aware. So what are the risks? Well, Zarna says there are people who don't take themselves seriously, who don't take discrimination seriously, and who don't take consent seriously. If you're playing with people like that or with someone who isn't very experienced, there is a potential for harm. Um, there are serious medical risks, too. For example, if you choke someone and you don't know the right way to do that, a person could die. And consent, as always, is key. As well as engaging in one-on-one -on -one play, many people enjoy the sense of community provided by kink events and parts of the internet devoted to BDSM. Um, before COVID-19 hit, um, places like London were experiencing something of a kinky renaissance with events attracting sometimes an even younger crowd than might typically be associated with the BDSM scene, but all adults, of course. Um, the benefits of BDSM definitely seem to outweigh the downsides, um, especially for people who are struggling with mental illness or mental disorder. Um, one BDSM practitioner says, I'm healing. I'm finding energy through BDSM and using that energy to replenish myself. If you or anyone you know is experiencing any severe mental illness, such as suicidal thoughts, you can contact 
the Lifeline. Uh, um, if you're in Australia, it's 131114. There's also, you can, um, you can contact the Trevor Project. Very easy to find on Google. They uh, offer a lot of help and support for uh, for youth, but more, but also for all persons. Uh, I'm Primal Piggy. Thank you for joining me for this BDSM United podcast, where we kind of looked over an article that talked about the healing benefits of BDSM. We do want to let you know that we also. Um, say that while BDSM is therapeutic, it's not a replacement for for professional therapy. And while um, your partner or partners can help you a lot uh, through and through a lot of things, they are not replacements for professionals. So if you need, if you find that you need or you think you may need professional mental health services, uh, definitely uh, seek out a kink-aware professional to help with your uh, therapy. I'm Primal Piggy. You can find all of our resources, all of our adult educational resources, at www.bdsmunited.com. It's a joy bringing this topic to you today. It's definitely... Uh, something that we uh, find uh, where BDSM is a benefit to everyone involved. Uh, It was a joy talking with you, and I'll talk with you again soon.